Welcome to the Fantasy Football Profit Podcast, hosted by Craig Phillips and Jeff Torrey. Visit us at FantasyFootballProfit.com. And now your hosts, Craig and Welcome Jeff. Welcome everyone to the Fantasy Football Profit Podcast. I'm Craig Phillips, joined as always by Jeff Torrey. And today we're doing our part two of our week 15 recap. We've got six more games to talk about here. So we're going to run through... Uh, Jaguar, we'll start with Jaguars Ravens here. If, if you get to a game, we have if you don't hear your game today, go check out yesterday's episode where we went over seven other games. So, Ravens Jaguars is our first game of the day to talk about. Ravens win 40 to 14, e- easy win for them. Jacksonville, though, well, Jacksonville lost today, they really got a win because the Jets won. So, because of the Jets winning, Jacksonville vaults to the number one pick now, and Trevor Lawrence will most likely be a Jacksonville Jaguar which the Jets just – the Jets lose even when they win. Yeah. Like, I'm, just, I'm, <laughs> truly, I'm glad they won, though. I didn't want them to go there, honestly. Yeah, <laughs> no one no one wants to be 0-16. We've already seen it twice in our in our lifetime. Yeah. Uh, you know, the Browns and, unfortunately, Detroit. Yeah. Um, and it, it, it's a it's bad feeling. rough field. season. <laughs> yeah, all around. So you don't yep. want it. But, but, uh, but in this regard – Yeah, is it going to matter, though? Truly, I mean, if Trevor Lawrence really is the guy you wanted, I mean, that's the thing. Yes, you could absolutely get him. Maybe he is as good as they say. But on all bad teams, one player does not make the difference. So you can definitely make the you know a great decision and get. And there's a bunch of other QBs out there too. I know that they're not as high. Maybe they just don't get rid of don't don't give up on Darnold yet. Give him another chance. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, but I mean, I, I, I'd probably go and get. A I QB. think we know what's. I think we know what the deal is there at this point. Yeah, yeah. I think I think his time is run its course. <laughs> All right, well, here we go. The baltimore Jacksonville game. Baltimore, led by Lamar Jackson, another good outing. 243 through the air, three touchdowns. He ran for a touchdown. Hey, we, we had faith. We had faith in Lamar coming into this playoff run with the teams he was going to play. And I think I feel like it's weird to say, I think we went out on a limb telling people to go get him because of how bad, how poorly he was paying, playing. And, you know, if you went and got him for, I would say, probably you didn't probably have to give up a lot. It worked out, I feel like. It's worked yeah. out well. The only thing, and we're, I, we haven't been wrong yet, right? Because technically, his outscored him, um, and we have one go, game to go, which Lamar has. I think is is he going against Giants? I'm trying to think who they play next week, but he should have a, a favorable matchup. Yeah, he, he it's the Giants next week. Yeah. Okay, so you should have a, a decent matchup, even though they're decent against the run. But it's a whole different yep. story when it's him. Uh, if he does well next week and scores like another 30 point game, we're absolutely right. The only thing that we we said in 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 that was uh Allen. Oh, don't break that up. Yeah, that part up. I want to give him credit though. <laughs> yeah. You have one game left, and once again, yep. Lamar has been better in the past two games. Yep. But Allen put on a clinic. He did, he did. huge, it was awesome. huge, huge, huge numbers. It didn't hurt you even if you traded him away. Uh, you still probably got the better end of that deal. But he did play very, very well. But you, we were right on every other thing. Like, right. unless last game goes awry, like. <laughs> yep. But yeah, Definitely. Lamar has been great. On the ground there, Dobbins 14 for 64 and a touchdown. Gus Edwards 9 for 42. I think Mark Ingram was actually a healthy scratch in this one. So, um, yeah, Jake, not, been, not much. No, J.K. Him. Dobbins is definitely going to be the He's guy lead back. in that yep. backfield. Yep. yep. Marquise Brown 6 for 98. Mark Andrews 5 for 66 and a touchdown. And, you know, that's that's more what we would wanted to see from the Baltimore offense this year. Much much more like it. All for Jacksonville. Gardner Minshew, 226, two touchdowns. And what will be one of his final starts in the NFL? Um, it's not going to continue past this year, especially if they go get Trevor Lawrence. So, and they will get Trevor Lawrence if they have the number one pick. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. So James Robinson, 16 carries, 35 yards. It's starting to go a little downhill for James Robinson, but he did catch a touchdown to save the day. He, he did. He did do that. But this is now two weeks in a row where we're starting to see. You know, the yard had slip a little bit, and I'm telling you, I don't believe in James Robinson for next year. I just don't. I just don't. Yeah, I mean, uh, l- look, I, <laughs> I'm i not going to go out on a limb and say he's going to carry this over. Right now, he's going to be the lead back. I don't think they're going to go out and get someone that is going to He'll be the lead back, and he'll be the lead back, and he'll be drafted as such next year, and I will not take any part in it. Right. Also, I think the other thing we're seeing here is – we're at the end of the year. He has had a lot of carries. We kept talking about he's the only guy in the backfield that gets carries. Yep. You're starting to see him wear down just a bit. It's yep. a very long season for a guy getting hit that many times. So I think that is the other part of it. But, yeah, it's, it's a hard one. And same thing I said about Swift, right? I think his 
his stock won't be as high as maybe it should be because you're on a bad team. Yep. It's going to be the same for James Robinson. On top of that, he wasn't a high draft pick or anything. So it'll be very interesting to see where he ends up, whether he's going to be value or drafted too high. Then uh, next game, Jets, Rams. This was the surprise of the day where the Jets get their first win with a 23-20 win over the Rams. I mean, that was just not, not an expected outcome at all. Darnold, 22-31, 207, and a touchdown. So it's not like Darnold went and <laughs> dominated this game and led him to victory very well. But, you know, they got the win, though. He didn't make the mistakes. Frank Gore, 23 carries, 59 yards, but a touchdown. Hey, there you go. Crowder, 6-for-66, six six, led the way there. Ty Johnson caught a touchdown. The Rams, man, they can just be bad at times. They're 9-5, and five, but this was an ugly one. Um, Goff threw for 209, two touchdowns, a pick. Akers, 15-63, to 63, and then left – with um, some kind of injury, I thought, but like he, he was nothing really major, so he should be fine, but just not a great day. Robert Woods did have one carry for 40 yards and caught six for 56 in a touchdown. Higby, finally, Higby shows up a little bit here, four for 67 in, in touchdowns. And Cooper Cup, five for 39. Ugly day, though. I don't know what happened here. Just can't really explain this one. No, I. I mean, you probably look past them nine and four, nine yeah, and four. You honestly. think they have an easy win? <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah, it's going to affect LA. Yeah. We'll we'll find out. Also, it shows, you know, as far as when you're talking about people that are in playoff contention or going to be in the playoffs, this definitely shows gaping holes, and other teams are going to look at it and be like, "Oh, we can definitely do that." <laughs> if the yeah. Jets can, we're going to do it. Exactly. Uh, so it's going to be it's going to be a rough one moving from here on out for yeah. LA. I have a feeling. Next up, uh, Cardinals win 33-26 over the Eagles. Kyler Murray threw for 406 yards, three touchdowns, ran for a touchdown. That's more like it for Kyler. like to see that again. The, the ground game there was actually led by Chase Edmonds today, 11 for 47. Drake didn't get much done, 10 for 26. And then a monster game from DeAndre Hopkins, 9 for 169, and a touchdown as the Cardinals win. But I almost think the bigger story here, even though Kyler was awesome, it's going to go over the Eagles side. It's Jalen Hurts. I mean, the guy threw for 338 yards, three touchdowns, ran for a touchdown. I mean, that's that's huge. If you just all of a sudden picked up Jalen Hurts and are playing him, like this is a like a, a huge get. I don't even know what to think about this. I mean, is, is Carson is Carson Wentz like seriously lose his job? Like, is it like uh, completely gone now? I think so. I, it's, I that's think, nuts. I think they that's, look to trade him. I, I don't, once again, I don't know his contract. I assume he has more than he has another year. He, just, on his he signed a big deal. I thought, you know. I, I think this is one where you try to get rid of him for whatever you can just to unload the contract. Cause you don't want that. You don't want once a uh, once a uh, possible MVP the year they won the, t- like the Super Bowl. you don't want him to be sitting behind the young gun, right? It's not going to be good for your team. This is one that would be like, okay, hey, New England, someone that is willing to take on that contract, willing to trade with you, you know, let, let's get this one done. Hurts is obviously their their future there, and maybe I'm wrong, but after this, especially, it's very, uh, I thought it was very interesting to see him really, and last week he did well as well, but this week you saw what he can do through the through the air, which was definitely the thing that you're going to be questioning, right? Okay, well, he can run. Great. We've seen quarterbacks, if they're a one-trick pony. 338 yards and three touchdowns, whole new ball game, right? Now you can do both. It reminded me a lot of Kyler Murray. It, it really did. He is very shifty. He's very quick, but he was making good reads and he was high pointing the ball to, to wide receivers. And he was doing things that Wentz just hasn't been able to do or get going this year. And his wide receivers are a little bit healthier, but at the same time, um, you know, even that last, uh, that last one, if you watch the game, he had uh, a throw down the center of the field that possibly could have tied the game to Goddard that ended up, you know, being incomplete, but he was, he was giving people the chance when you know, you're going deep with it. Yeah. So I, I was very impressed with Jalen Hurts. Maybe this is just a one game rendition of, of the best football he can play, but he looks like a player. Yeah, he really does. And it's, it's crazy that this happened to Wentz like this. I mean, it was in just 2019 where he signed a four-year extension, four-year, $128 million extension. He never is, came back. He never came back right after that injury. No, and it truly, a, truly, I, I say this because it's amazing the how far you can fall, right? Because he yeah. truly was probably going to – I think he would have won the MVP if he didn't get yep. hurt that year. Yep. MVP to probably getting traded. Yep. It, 
crazy. All right, next up, Chiefs Saints. Chiefs win 32 to 29 in a good game there. Mahomes, the numbers, I mean, like the 26 to 47 doesn't look as great as you're used to seeing, but 254 yards, still three touchdowns. So really solid there. Clyde Edwards Alaire, 14 to 79, less with a injury. So that doesn't yeah. look, I don't think he's going to be back next week. I don't um, either. It what looked, I saw. I mean, you didn't actually, it looked weird. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's all I can say it wasn't gross like Dak or anything. No, but he definitely was in like, he almost did the splits and the guy yeah. landed. The, you didn't see the injury itself, but he definitely was not putting any weight on it as they were helping him off the field. Yep. It did not look good. And then Bell steps in and he did relatively well for what what they right there a passing team first yep. even when they had to seal the game they let Mahomes do it with his arm which rather, is odd most teams don't do what they did let throwing that ball on second down no. there and, and that's um, why I think they're they have to still be the favorites to repeat as Super Bowl champions right. because how that is the most difficult thing to try to guard Mahomes for four straight downs when you have to oh yeah it's impossible Travis Kelsey eight for 68 touchdown Tyreek Hill six for 53 but a touchdown so those guys just they do it every day, every every game. Uh, for the Saints, Drew Brees came back. It was a really it was really ugly early for him. Uh, those numbers were not looking good. He he definitely turned it around to get the three touchdowns. Still was only fifteen of thirty four, but two hundred thirty four yards with the, with the three touchdowns. Threw one to Kamara, one to Humphrey, who I'd really never heard of, and then one to Latavius <laughs> Murray. Alvin Kamara had eleven carries for fifty four yards. So yeah, no um again. No Michael Thomas now for the year. That's been just a 100% lost season for him. And, you know, Saints are 10-4, and four, though. They got Drew Brees back. We'll see what they can do something. You know, well, Manu Sanders led the way with four for 76, just didn't get any touchdowns out of it. Yeah. And I, I think that it'll be very interesting. I, I think that Casey is obviously the, the people to beat. But New Orleans, that second half made me believe that they're still a contender because Brees looked a lot better, right. like you said. Like, it was ugly first. But then he he really did look better. They tried to get Elvin Kamara, you know, the ball a little more. Uh, they targeted him six times. Thank goodness. He only caught three of them, one of them for a touchdown. But he led the backfield with 11 carries, with uh, Latavius Murray only getting four. So I, I liked what I saw. And Brees started getting more comfortable. And you could see that precision coming back. That, uh, that I don't even – technically a back shoulder pass, I guess, even though he's uh, in between two defenders. Um, to bring it, you know, bring the game very close at the end was a, a thing of beauty. So I think that they'll they'll come back around. They just happen to hit KC when they're they're hot. Yep. All right, how about we talk about we got the two Saturday games now. We're doing Saturday football now here as the season ends up. Uh, Buffalo Broncos. Buffalo beats up on the Broncos 48-19 to win the AFC East here. It's the first time since 1995 for them. Josh Allen, 28 of 40, 359, two touchdowns. He ran two of them in as well. I mean, Josh Allen is he is such a better quarterback than I ever expected. He is. He, he really is. I never expected this from Josh Allen at all. But, I thought he was going to be a one-trick pony. I really yeah. did. I thought he was going to be a Russian quarterback that had a big arm but was going to struggle with accuracy the rest of his career. Yep. And he cleaned that up very yep. quickly. I mean, it's yep. been impressive. I You know, credit yes. where credit is due. Uh, Zach Moss led the way on the ground with 13 of 81. Devin Singletary got himself a 51-yard touchdown which saved his day eight for 68, but he's been a disappointment for us. Don't really like talk about Devin Singletary, even when he gets a touchdown, sorry. Yeah. But the, the one guy I do, I, I am very proud of is <laughs> Stefan Diggs, 11 catches, 147 yards. I mean, people were ranking him in the like close to 30 on the, the 25 to 30 to start this season. And I mean, we, I know we never bought into that. Like this guy was too good and too talented to be that ranked that low. And he is just, these last three games have been insane. 10 catches, 10 catches, 11 catches. He's been really good. He left this thing with, left this game with a foot injury, but don't believe he's going to miss any time, which that was relief there. And then Cole Beasley, eight for 112. Cole Beasley has been um, really good as well. He's a top 20 guy on the season now at this point. Top 20 wide receiver for the year, Cole Beasley. Yeah, another one. Always overlooked. Oh, yeah. It's just been yeah. really good. And the Broncos, not not a great day for them. Uh, Drew Locke, this is more of Drew Locke that I expect <laughs> yeah, to see. Yeah. This is the Drew Locke I expect. 20 for 32, 132 a touchdown. Melvin Gordon gets himself two touchdowns, 11 carries, 61 yards. This, just isn't, this isn't the offense to really see if the guy can play yet. He's had a couple decent games here these last three, but still it's just not 
the team's just not that great around him either. Noah Fant, eight for 68, got a touchdown. Um, Jerry Judy, one for 19. Like, Jerry Judy, I wish we could see what he could do. This, this too, isn't like the right spot for him, you know? No, no, no. I, I, we, I think he is going to be greatly underestimated next year. And you move him to the wide receiver two position because Sutton will be back. Yep, yep. And I, I do, this team will be healthier. I do think we'll finally get to see what he is. But you do wonder if this is, as a rookie, you think that even though you don't get, you know, a ton of catches and your, your team is struggling, at least you get a lot of like, you can see what it's like to go up against, you know, the big time corners and, and what the NFL game is like and just get used to the daily grind of it. So maybe it's not a complete like lost season as if it would have been for like a second or third year guy, yep. so I'm hoping it doesn't affect him. But I don't think we we have any idea what this guy is capable of. No, not really. Not yet. Then how about the final game for us to talk about here? We'll talk about the final Saturday game. Green Bay beats Carolina 24-16. Aaron Rodgers didn't have to do a lot in this one. 20 for 29, 143, touchdown, ran one in. He just he didn't really need to do much there. Aaron Jones ran the ball 20 times for 145 yards and touchdown. And Devontae Adams only had seven catches for 42 yards. So if you were relying on like that Rodgers Adams connection for fantasy, uh, this was not the week for them to do this whole uh, let's run the ball thing and get a you know a decent win. <laughs> this was not what you wanted to see. And it, you know, hey, that's what happens, right? Robert Tanyan did catch a touchdown there for that one touchdown for Rodgers. So, you know, that didn't go <laughs> great, I guess. R- Rodgers probably didn't hurt you necessarily because of the rushing touchdown, but still, it's not what you wanted to see for for fantasy purposes. I mean, the, the team's fine. They're 11 and three, rolling the playoffs <laughs> like they do, you know. Yeah. For the Panthers, Bridgewater, 21 to 35, 258. No, no touchdowns. He ran one in. Mike Davis, 14 of 59. DJ Moore led the way with six for 131, but there's just. Um, there's DJ that. Moore again. Yeah. <laughs> every once in a while. Right. Every, yeah. He, he's periodically will do this, you know, but yeah, yeah. Not, not, not a lot from the Panthers offense in this one. So, well, all right. That's going to wrap it up here for week 15 then. So we got one more of these on the season. Week 16 is going to be our final recap show of the year because I don't really think many people play week 17, so we're not going to go that into week 17. But one one more recap show, Jeff. It's crazy. The season is uh, coming to a close. It looks like Jeff has one championship to his name now. Most likely. Most likely. Yeah, it looks like <laughs> it looks like I finally I – did, I did do it correctly in one. And I think we're officially – I'm in the Scott Fish Bowl. We made it to the ah, – Yeah, we did well, though. Did well. Yeah, we did really well. Second to the last round – it was uh, out of the 10 teams, you had to be the top team to move on. And then the top team out of, out of those is the official winner because you go through so many teams. We needed some better games. From- yeah. And we had Rodgers and yeah. Cam and, and just not enough for this week. But, uh, we, you know, we the best we've ever done. So it just shows you if you stick with it, with all the injuries, you can still make a team work. And we still got some relegation leagues going on. We'll see what happens. I think we will probably be in a couple title games next week, which is yeah. going to be cool. So we'll see. I think last year. I think we won two titles in relegation leagues last year. We'll see. I think we're going to, I think we can get a couple this year again. So um, I'll post all those matchups on Instagram. If you guys want to go check that out, Instagram.com slash fantasy football profit. I'll have those championship matchups posted, you know, sometime this week. So we can, um, you know, see at, shoot, at one point here, the, I, I don't have it up right now to see what happened this week, but uh, last year's champions league winner was still in it. It's in the semifinals trying to go for back-to-back championships. So that would be oh, wow. very, very impressive pull that one off but i'll have all that posted on instagram for you guys but all right that'll do it for today we'll be back uh wednesday's show so we're recording wednesday show tuesday night that's going to be our mailbag episode so if you're still going going for championships get us your questions go to instagram.com slash fantasy football profit send us your questions there fantasy football profit at gmail.com youtube.com slash fantasy football profit we will get to your questions at any of those any of those places so get them in and we'll try to help you win a championship but all right i'll do it talk to you guys next time